Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. My name is Oli, I'm a final year graduate entry medical student at the University of Warwick. Now you may have noticed, I look a little different <laughs> than usual. I'm wearing a white coat, which is something that we never do in UK medical schools under normal circumstances. I know this is something that a lot of people who apply to medical school think that medical students and doctors do, you know, I can't wait till I graduate and I wear my white coat on the wards. That isn't a thing in UK hospitals and it hasn't been a thing in UK hospitals for many, many years as they are deemed an infection control risk. But before we go on to why I'm wearing a white coat for this video, I do just have to remind you once again, if you are so willing to like and subscribe to the channel. It really helps me out and it's basically the main thing that helps me keep all of this content free and coming for you guys. And that's not gonna change as long as the channel continues to grow. So the reason, without further ado, that I'm wearing a white coat in today's video is that we are talking about anatomy labs. These are one of the most unique experiences that you will have during medical school. And to put into context why we even attend anatomy labs as medical students, let's briefly think about the importance of anatomy and why we're even studying it at all. And the answer is pretty basic, at least in my humble opinion, and that's because as doctors and indeed medical students, a vast, vast majority of the conditions that we are seeing, treating and diagnosing are related in some way to the underlying anatomy. What do I mean by this? Well, let's think about something like a heart attack, one of the most common conditions that we are concerned with. This happens when one of the coronary arteries, these big blood vessels that supply the heart muscle, the myocardium, become blocked or infarcted in medical speak. Because these arteries would normally supply blood to the beating heart, therefore it's not being perfused with oxygen and we get tissue damage and death, which is why people experience the crushing classic chest pain that comes with heart attacks. What this means for us is that medical students and doctors need to have a very good and complete understanding of how the heart normally works, that is its normal anatomy, physiology, electrical activity and so on, how it pumps blood around the body, the fluid mechanics of that process, the nerve signals that stimulate that process, how different drugs affect the activity of the heart, and then, of course, what happens when any of that normal anatomy and physiology is deranged? What is abnormal and how can we investigate it? And the exact same principle applies for gastrointestinal problems, neurological problems, dermatological problems. Most areas in medicine that we think about are a complete sum of the parts, including the anatomy, physiology, pharmacology, and so on. Anatomy is one of the most central pieces in that jigsaw puzzle. I would argue potentially the most important, but opinion is out there on that. And of course, this is just one of the things that makes medicine, medicine. This knowledge of lots of different subject areas combined together, which become the practice of medicine. So at this point, we've accepted that we need to learn some anatomy. Not everyone likes it, but we all have to get on with it. But how are we actually going to learn our anatomy, right? We could just spend hours looking at a textbook. We could create models. We might look at 3D visualizations. Increasingly now, we have access to things like anatomage tables, which allow us to view 3D reconstructions in real time. We have augmented reality, which can beam models into the world around us. We could even try and identify our own anatomy and find different landmarks on each other. It is generally accepted, however, not universally mind, that one of the best ways to teach and learn anatomy is to study cadaveric specimens. What is a cadaver is the obvious question. Well, it comes from the Latin cadia. I hope I've got that pronunciation right, which means to fall. So a cadaver is a fallen one, essentially somebody who has fallen. But usually what it means when we hear the word cadaver is that the body has been made available either for scientific research or for education purposes. Because people who are dead cannot feel pain or experience discomfort in any means as far as we are aware. Examination of the anatomy of dead people allows investigation, manipulation and observation that would never be possible or permissible in a living person. And the reason we do it is that it provides effectively the best view of the real world anatomy that we can get. Textbooks only capture a very idealized version of the anatomy that is useful for medical students who need to pass their exams, for learning about the theory, but these are averages of many, many specimens that have been dissected, cut down, and studied very closely. They do not represent an individual living person. In reality, there are countless anatomical variants. We are all wired 
together and plumbed together in very, very different ways. And examining a real cadaveric specimen allows you to see the distribution of nerves, muscles, blood vessels, as it exists in a real person that was once living in front of you. Because we are more or less the sum of our parts, and particularly if we're investigating conditions that are very closely related to the anatomy, things like strokes, thoracic outlet syndromes, myocardial infarction, we need to be aware of these variations that can exist in the real world, as it's sometimes simply gonna be the root cause of the problem we're trying to treat. So to come to the meat of this video, and once again why I'm actually wearing this white coat, what is an anatomy lab? This does vary hugely by medical school, but essentially what happens is this. You and a group of your fellow medical students will put on a white coat, like this one, as it is a lab environment and you need to take all precautions as such, and you will enter the anatomy facility together. This might be a dedicated anatomy centre, it could be a surgical training centre, as it is for my case at Warwick Medical School, or even somewhere like a morgue. It really depends on the specifics of how your medical school teaches its anatomy. But the bottom line is that you're entering a very special place that is responsible for the storage of anatomical specimens of dead people. And this means some extra rules apply, that is being quiet, being respectful, and keeping your hands to yourself. It is an immense privilege that we are awarded as medical students, as healthcare students, that we are even able to see these specimens that have been dedicated often specifically for your use so you can learn and be a better doctor one day and that is something really special and something to take really seriously. So once you're inside one of several things might happen. You might move around a series of specimens looking for particular structures such as nerves, blood vessels, muscles. These might be led by a demonstrator such as a surgeon, a doctor or a clinical teaching fellow, someone who is dedicated to teaching you guys anatomy or indeed it might be self-directed, you may be given a checklist or a booklet to look through with structures to try and find on the different specimens and identify them for yourself. Again, there might be a particular collection of specimens on display, such as hearts, lungs, brains, entire pelvises or sections of the body, simply depending on what the learning outcomes for that session are. You may even take part in dissection, if this is something your medical school does, using scalpels and other surgical tools to remove one layer at a time and uncover the anatomy for yourselves in more detail, or indeed have this done for you by an experienced demonstrator. It is difficult to be more specific than this, guys, because medical schools vary wildly in exactly how they've decided to teach their anatomy. There is no universal standard. Trust me, as someone who is incredibly interested in this and an early careers medical education researcher, there is little to no evidence that any teaching method is better or worse than any other. All accredited medical schools produce graduates that are fully capable as doctors. So what this means is that there is a lot more experimentation and free reign for medical schools to tackle this problem how they like. For example, some medical schools will use only full body dissection for everything, some medical schools will use only virtual solutions and no human tissue whatsoever. For example, at Warwick, we're something of a halfway house. We don't have active dissection that we take part in ourselves, but we have something called plastinates. And what these are are not 3D plastic models, as the name might suggest. They are real specimens that have been dissected by expert surgeons, and some of these dissections take hundreds, potentially thousands of hours to be made to the specifications of the medical school. Once they're ready, they are flash frozen, if you like, in plastic, and then they're forever preserved as a teaching tool. If any of you have ever been to the Body Works exhibition with these plastinates that come out of the Von Hagen's facility, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. It's the exact same process that produces these specimens. And then this is combined with fresh tissue samples that come through occasionally as part of something like a surgical training course. They may have leftover heads or limbs, and you can examine those too. The surface anatomy teaching, where you'll spend some time with surface anatomy models, usually you'll wrap them in cling film and try and identify surface anatomy landmarks which are really important for your physical exams and there's radiology teaching as well where you'll either be looking at scans x-rays films and so on when i was taught this was done by hooking up the scanner to a projector and people would be scanned volunteers of course but in front of your entire anatomy class 
it was found that I have a small bladder, apparently, and some oddly shaped sixth ribs, if I remember correctly. And all of this is being beamed up onto the wall, but it was one of the things that's really stuck with me as a method for learning anatomy. And once again, I can't stress this enough, but any UK-based medical school that you go to, or any university that is accredited by a UK-based medical school, will more than adequately prepare you to become a doctor and work in the NHS. They vary in their methods, but this is true not just for anatomy, but for everything. Don't get stressed out and think, I need to go to a medical school that uses dissection if I want to be a surgeon, or I want to go to one of these most cutting edge universities that only uses virtual teaching. It makes literally no difference to anything. No specialty or job cares about how you learned anatomy in medical school, just that you know the anatomy, if you know that you want to go into, say, a surgical career. Because at the end of the day, all that matters in medical school is that you pass your exams and everyone and everyone finds their own way to embed the anatomy knowledge in their heads, so really don't stress about it. And lastly, speaking of not getting stressed over things, anatomy labs are a place that some medical students can potentially find upsetting. Many people will, hopefully, have never seen a dead body before. And the shock of that experience for the first time, combined with the fact that the labs are often very hot, they're high pressure environments, you're being asked challenging questions about anatomy that might be new to you, and on top of that, the smell of the preserving agents, things like formaldehyde, it can be a lot. This often leads to people feeling a bit lightheaded or a bit queasy, and people do faint in anatomy labs. It's a very known phenomenon. Equally, it makes some people really hungry, and I'm sure there is some science behind this, but it's definitely one of those things that happens. But the long and short of it is, if you feel faint, if you feel unwell, and you need to take a couple of steps outside and get some air, that will always be absolutely fine. Speak to a demonstrator or a lecturer, let them know that you're leaving, but it's something that all medical schools encourage people to do if they need the space. Go and take the space because, as I say, people feeling uncomfortable, hot, lightheaded, it's very well known and people do fall over and can hurt themselves because there's a lot of stuff around. Anatomy labs take some getting used to and that's absolutely fine. It is just a new experience and you will get used to it. Which brings us to the end. Thank you so much for watching guys. Be sure to hit the like button for me, leave a comment, subscribe to the channel and I will see you next time. Take care.